Meanwhile, an Ohio federal judge has ordered the IRS to turn over a list of nearly 300 Tea Party groups whose applications for tax-exempt status were put on hold by the agency. This after a class action lawsuit by Tea Party groups claimed their constitutional rights were violated. Joining me now, manager and senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation, Hans von Spakowski. Boy, I hope I pronounced that correctly. You, you got it right. <laughs> This story is fascinating to me because the IRS all along has said, we don't have to turn that over. Well, they do it now. A judge is demanding it. Well, oh, yeah. Listen, they went to the judge and tried to get a protective order. And the judge not only denied it, but issued an order compelling them to turn this over. It, it's a big procedural win for the Tea Party organizations in this lawsuit. Uh, of course, the IRS, their defense is this is violates privacy laws and we couldn't possibly do this. Meanwhile, they've been approved to listen to your telephone calls. Uh, they certainly have no issue uh, looking at our personal information. Are they talking about out of both sides of their mouth on this? Oh, they particularly are. Listen, the statute they were relying on was a statute intended to prevent the IRS from uh, publicly disclosing people's tax returns. The IRS instead is trying to use that same statute to not turn over information about their abuse of taxpayers. Wow. Okay. We've already seen the IRS decline to give information to the Congress when it's been subpoenaed, right? They right. said, no, we're not sharing. And finally, the IG comes in and says, the information's hidden in plain sight. I just found it. Is that going to happen again? I mean, is it possible that uh, is there any way for the IRS not to comply to say we can't find it, we don't know where it is, it's on a tape we lost years ago? No, because the, the judge ordered them uh, to turn over some very specific information, and it includes the list of almost 300 organizations that the IRS sent to the inspector general. So they're not going to be able to say they, they can't find this. The only thing they could do is defy the judge, but then that would open them up to frankly, pretty serious sanctions against the Justice Department and potentially the Treasury Department. I want to mention, uh, talk to you a little bit about a woman named Takesha Brown. She's an attorney, worked for the IRS, and yeah. now she's in big, hot water. Basically, she won money for a private client in an auto accident and then took the money herself, if I'm understanding the details here correctly. What R happened? Right. And and, and why would somebody working for the IRS do something like this? Well, it wasn't just that she was working for the IRS. She was working for the ethics office of the IRS, which uh, would come as probably no surprise to a lot of American taxpayers. What I don't quite get in this was what she was doing representing private clients when she's working for the <laughs> IRS, too. A I mean, that's outside that... work. A little bonus. <laughs> a little yeah. extra. And, and you know what's interesting about this case is that at one point uh, she apparently left a file, a private file about a taxpayer on a party bus uh, <gasps> headed, I think, to New York. And oh when she God. was caught, she said, oh, my, my boss, he'll cover for me. Hmm, maybe not. She's no longer working for the IRS. But I, I, I got to tell you, I have to share these details that we, we, we repeat often. I'll admit it. IRS rehires ex-staffers who have big problems. 824 right. of their 7,100 uh, employees had prior employment issues. Of those, 141 had documented, guess what, tax problems. So they hire these people back despite the fact that maybe they don't pay their taxes, they've had some other kind of issue. It seems to me, if you were at the gate, charged at the helm with protecting taxpayer dollars, collecting them, making sure the system worked appropriately, this would not be the way you operated. Well, no, it wouldn't. And, and keep in mind, not a single one of the employees who was uh, involved in this targeting of conservative organizations, which was an abuse of the law, a violation of the law, None of them have suffered any consequences. Even Lois Lerner, look, she retired with a full pension. Uh, she hasn't had any kind of financial consequences from what happened. You know, you and I are both going to have to be nicer because it's almost April 15th, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Hans. It's great to see you. Sure, anytime. Thanks a bunch.